Hello, Parallel Church. Happy Easter to all of Yay. you. Woo. <laughs> Woo. And happy online campus anniversary. It's officially yes. one year old. So exciting. A whole year. And uh, to join yes. us to celebrate a whole year, we have some Special we have some guests. guest visitors. Say hi. Woo. Hello, online campus. So glad you guys are joining us for our 1030 service. Happy Easter to you and your families. Happy Easter. We're so glad you can be here with us. Yeah. We are doing some fun stuff today in the online campus. So to celebrate the online campus anniversary and Easter, our biggest day of the year, we are doing some giveaways. So we are giving away some merch. We are right. also giving away a sound bar, and I'm going to give you some information on how you can enter. So what we want you guys to do is to invite people to join the online campus yep. Facebook group. So what you have to do is send it to people, share the live stream. We want to see you guys participating, participating in the comments, sharing and inviting yeah. people like crazy today. And we're going to take all of those engagements and enter them to win not only the merch, but the soundbar, because we want you guys to have a better church experience at home. Yes, yes, and seeing as it's been one year, I got some stats for the last year, just to see kind of how things have changed over an entire year. And so it's we have awesome. 1,283 awesome. members uh, mm -hmm. in the last year, and that is an average of three and a half people added per day, which That's is pretty, pretty awesome. exciting. Uh, 677 job, brand new people that have not been to Parallel Church ever wow have been added into this group with 33 countries <laughs> that we've covered which that's amazing there's only like 190 countries in the world or something like that well, so we're on our way we are on our way <laughs> and over 100 cities so that's pretty exciting that is super exciting well that's yeah yeah we couldn't do that without you guys so no, keep on inviting not. keep sharing um if you guys are joining us for the first time today and this is new to you we want to yep. reach out to you so let us know in the comments we can actually see the comments live yeah it's pretty awesome so let us know where you're Peggy. watching from send us some emojis yes uh share this with somebody that would be awesome and get your name into the draw you could yep. attend all the services and get all those extra yeah all those extra more uh, sound for calls. you <laughs> <laughs> more chances to win more chances to win for those competitive people out there yeah. um if you guys are new to this this isn't just something we do on sundays no. we have a full week of stuff that goes on yeah, absolutely like on mondays mm -hmm. we always end with like a live q a on series yep. uh, so this is a one-off but we'll be continuing next week our yep. let's take our job back series yep. but That'll have a live Q&A. Tuesdays are prayer nights. Uh, if you have any prayer requests, send those in. Awesome. Wednesdays are our online house party nights. Which is a lot of fun. So yeah, yes. if you want to connect, definitely do that. And then Thursdays, we have our build the team night, which uh, helps you grow in your kind of leadership skills, just personal growth and everything like that. So yeah. So if you've never joined that. the Facebook group, now is the time to go and do yes. that. Do it and we'll enter you into the draw, which is super Absolutely. fun. Absolutely. And if you guys do have kids that are joining us today, we have a kids uh, experience for you guys yep. on the website. So go and check that out. If you are joining us in a physical location, yeah. there is so much excitement happening so today. Willy we Wonka, got Willy Wonka. Got we got the Easter Bunny. Chocolate. <laughs> There's egg hunts and photo booths and yeah. Can't go it's, wrong with that. Nope. And there I was watching kids walk out of the services with like giant bags of candy. Hopefully one of my Yeah, I'm sorry. Hopefully my kids were I'm one. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but not too much chocolate. It might have been one of it your it kids. It probably was. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> There's lots of photo opportunities and things, and man, the worship team is sounding good this morning. Yeah, they were, they were doing amazing. The, we were already at the first service, so this is the second one. Man, so it is. Yeah, has the been opener sounding. today is killer, guys. Yes. Um, and we are about to go and join the team here in just a few seconds. So wherever you are, wherever you're watching from, we're going to join the team in a time of worship. This is where we lift God above our circumstances. So let's go join the team.
without grace. Holes were holes of light. Our dreams are now just dry holes. Our future buried by our past. But this doesn't make the great light. Our hope can be brought to life again. It's time to uncover what was there.
like a little bit of Johnny Cash to start off your Easter service. Anyways, welcome to Parallel Church. My name is Ralph. This is Cindy. We serve as campus pastors here. We're just getting started, guys. Just getting started. We got a great set for you guys to participate with in a few moments here. If you've got little ones, Cindy's going to fill you in about Parallel Kids for today because it's going to be awesome too. It's going to be fun. They're going to have so much fun. Not as much fun as we're having, no. but fun because they have Willy Wonka, Easter Bunny, and loads of candy, yes. like loads and you're welcome. Thank <laughs> you. It's a, so, <laughs> a grandma. So register out this door to my left and pick up your kids out this door to my right with all their candy. Yeah, at the end of the service. Leave them there now and then you get to take them home, which will be awesome. But we're just getting started because this set, guys, is good to participate. And I asked the first service, I said, if I could give you a million dollars, who'd put up their hand right now? Okay, all that means is that you agree, right? And that's exactly what we're saying when we lift our hands like this to the songs and the things we're singing. It's just saying, yes, I agree with this. And we get to do that. We also get to clap because this is an amazing set. That's all I'm going to say. Let's do it. Words are on the screen.
I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I was prophesying, there was a noise, a rattling sound, and the bones came together, bone to bone. I looked, and tendons and flesh appeared on them, and skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man, and say to it, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Come breath from the full wind and breathe into these flames that they will live.
was a moment when the lights went out When death had claimed its victory The king of love had given up his life The darkest day in history There on a cross they made for sinners For every curse his blood atoned One final breath and it was finished But not the end we could have known For the earth began to shake
Jesus, we come to you today to say thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for coming to earth to dwell among us. Thank you for sacrificing yourself on the cross for us. Thank you for rising again, proving once and for all that you are the King. All hail King Jesus. And that the same power that raised you from the dead is in us. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And thank you, Holy Spirit, for being here among us. And we invite you now to minister to each one where we need it most. We thank you. You're so good. May our praises make you smile now, in Jesus' name. Isn't our God good? Come on. You may be seated. Welcome to Parallel Church. Happy Easter, everyone. Man, it's, it's Easter. It's the most important day in the calendar for us as Christians. It's the day that changed everything, and here we are 2000, over 2,000 years later still celebrating the amazing change, the transformation of the world. I don't know about you, but I'm here celebrating the transformation in me. All hail King Jesus. And the question that I want to I want to get to today is is what we're celebrating? Is this just a holiday and is what we're celebrating real? Is it is it true? Because if it is true, it changes everything. But if there's a sliver of doubt, if there's, if there's a, a chance that it's not true, that it's just religious rhetoric, then well, Paul said it, all of this is a waste of time. So it's worth investigating, don't you think? And knowing that we know, and I know for many of you, I grew up in the church and I've got questions and many of you have grown up in the church and you still have questions. Well, we need to settle those questions. At least about this, most of all, about the resurrection, most of all. And if you're new to church, maybe somebody drug you here and you're like, this is just religious rhetoric, what's this all about? If that's you, you need to know if this is just religion or if this is something else, and if it's true. And what makes Christian, you know there's 4,200 different religions on the planet, but there's only one empty tomb. And what makes Christianity different? It's today. It's Easter. But how can we know it's true? I mean, really know. I, I want to go to the scriptures, of course, and go through the story of, of Easter. And I wanna, I'm going to take it from the book of Luke. And, and one of the reasons why I want to take it from the book of Luke is because of how Luke starts his entire book. For those of you who don't know, Luke was a doctor. Uh, yeah, he had medical practice, but he also was a doctor and, and highly educated. And he wrote, he wrote an account, and this is what he said in Luke chapter 1 about the letter that he was writing. He said, many have undertaken to draw an account of the things that have been fulfilled among us. Just in that one sentence, I could park there for a while. And he says, many have, have written these accounts down. So then the question begs to be asked, so why another one? Like, why, Luke, are you writing another account? And one of the things he hints at it, just in this sentence alone, but he'll give us the explanation just in a moment, but he says, because these things didn't happen in a land far, far away, in a, in a time far, far away, this happened among us. And we need to write an account of what happened was fulfilled among us just as they were handed down to us from those who were first eyewitnesses and servants of the word. So he says that didn't happen among us, but there are still, at the time of Luke's writing, there are still people living who witness these with their own eyes. Not some hearsay, not some religious rhetoric, not some in the land, land far away. 
eyewitnesses happen now. And then he says this, with this in mind, since I myself have carefully investigated, and this is what I'm going to invite you to do, you need to, believer or not believer, you need to carefully investigate everything from its beginning. You need to carefully investigate, especially the event of Easter, of the resurrection of Jesus. He did careful investigation. Well, as a highly educated doctor, he would have investigated and done detailed research. He would have taken interviews with these eyewitnesses' accounts. And he's not writing, when Luke's writing this, he's not writing the Bible. He's writing, look at it, he says, I too decided to take an orderly account for you, most excellent Theophilus. The book of Luke is a letter to a man named Theophilus for why? So that you may know the certainty. And this is what we come here to discuss, the certainty. We may know for sure that this is not just because my parents told me or my grandparents told me or you know, I, this is because I grew up in the West. This, no, no, he says, you need to know the certainty of the things you have been taught. So he's writing this account. And when Luke writes this, He's not writing the Bible because the Bible has yet to be formed. And in fact, it wouldn't be formed until 300 years after Luke wrote this letter. He's not writing the Bible. Yet what Luke investigated and researched was so protected by the church, so valued by the church, that they guarded it and protected it for over 300 years. And it was eventually included in what we now have as the Bible. So with that in mind... Let's go and look at how Luke records the events surrounding the resurrection of Jesus. Luke chapter 24, he says this. He says, On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. When the women, when the women went to the tomb, they weren't going with the expectation of this was something special. They were going to just simply perform, you know, ritual um, what was then known as rituals among the Jews, that they were performing burial rituals of a dead friend. That's what they went there for. Verse 2 says, They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. And while they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. And in their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee? And then the angels quote verbatim what Jesus said. The Son of Man must be delivered over to the hands of sinners, be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. And then it says this in verse 8. It says, then they remembered his words. <laughs> then. Then they remembered his words. When they came back from the tomb... They told all these things to the 11, the 11 being Jesus' disciples, his closest followers had spent three years with him. They came to the 11 and to all of the others that were gathered. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary, the mother of James. It's interesting that, that Luke includes specific names. Again, remember, he's writing to people, eyewitnesses in the account, and he's listing names. You don't put that in there if you're being vague because anyone could go to any one of these women and say, is this true? Did this really happen like this? He puts their names in there. And they came, these three women came to the apostles, to the, the, the 11, and said this. And they told them about it. But they did not believe the women, look at this, because their words seemed to them like nonsense. <laughs> and I'm thinking, if you're writing the Bible, you, you might want to skip that part. I mean, these are the 11. These are Peter, James, and John, Matthew. Like, these are the 11 who witnessed Jesus walk on water, who witnessed Jesus calm a storm with just his words, who witnessed Jesus raise Lazarus from the dead, who witnessed Jesus heal the, the sick, the blind, the, the deaf, the lame, who fed 5,000. These are the 11. And in this, when the women came back and told them, it, to them, it seemed like nonsense, which honestly is a little bit encouraging for me. Because I'm thinking if they were there, walking with him, talking with him, witnessing all these things firsthand, and they found it hard to believe, we're, we're okay. We're okay if we question things and find it hard to believe.
Peter, however, got up and ran to the tomb. Bending over, he saw the strips of linen lying by themselves, and he went away, wondering to himself what had happened. Peter, St. Peter, St. Peter's Basilica, that Peter left the empty tomb wondering what happened. If you're writing the Bible, you might skip that part. I'm thinking Peter's telling Luke all that went on, and Luke's like writing down. He's like, ah, do, do you have to include that? We can, we can just skip that part. <laughs> Luke continues on. He says, now the same day, two of them, two, two of the disciples of the inner circle, were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. And they were talking with each other about everything that had happened. And as they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them, but they were kept from recognizing him. Interesting. And Jesus asked them, what are you discussing together as you walk along? And they stood still, their faces downcast. They're downcast, and we're going to see why. They're downcast, even though, and we're going to see it in a moment, even though the women told them that the tomb is empty and that the angels told them that he's risen. Even though Peter went and discovered that the women were telling truth about the tomb being empty, they're still downcast. And one of them, named Cleopas, asked him, Asked Jesus, are you the only one visiting Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened there? This caught my attention. And the reason why it caught my attention is because I'm thinking, wait, this just didn't happen. The events of Jesus, the crucifixion of Jesus, all of the empty, none of this happened with just a small circle. According to these guys, all of Jerusalem was aware which means Luke, Luke is not writing hundreds of years later. He's writing in the time it happened among us. Meaning that what he's writing, the eyewitnesses and everything that's going on, anyone could have said, that's bunk. Yeah. You know, that, that's not true. That didn't really happen. I was there. I saw it. But what he's writing is, is there. And he, all of Jerusalem know. And they go like, well, I didn't know. I didn't know. All of Jerusalem knew, Which makes me think, if all of Jerusalem knows... Do I, is there more accounts than just the Bible? Because if, if all the Jerusalem knows, surely there'd be other historical accounts that would verify more than just the believers, just the followers, more accounts that would verify that the events that occurred, occurred. So I'm glad you asked that question. <laughs> because there are. In fact, there's 15 other historical accounts, his, historians, not all Jews, not all Romans, Syrians, Greeks, like there's a bunch, the whole region that write accounts, not all believers, not the Bible, that write accounts that, of Jesus's life, his death, the way that he died, and his sudden disappearance three days later, verified by the fact that all of his followers said that he is resurrected and they saw him. And, and Here's one, of, here's one of, you know, non-Bible, a Jewish historian named uh, Flavius Josephus was a non-Christian Jewish historian, best known for his, his writings on the destruction of Jerusalem that happened in 70 AD by the Romans. This is what he wrote. He says, at this time, there was a wise man who was called Jesus. His conduct was good, and he was known to be virtuous. And many people from among the Jews and other nations became his disciples. Pilate condemned him to be crucified and to die, but those who had become his disciples did not abandon his discipleship, and they reported that he had appeared to them three days after his crucifixion, that he was alive. Accordingly, he was perhaps the Messiah concerning who the prophets have recounted wonders. Not a Christian, a Jewish historian. And he wasn't the only one. Like I said, there's 15 others. I'll give you 10 of them. And if you want, I'd encourage you to investigate just like Luke investigated. Not just in what's in the Bible, 
but investigate historically. And here's, I'll, I'll give you, I'll put, I'll give the names up there. I have included 10 of the 15 because I can't pr pronounce the other five. <laughs> Lucian of Samoset is a Greek author. He wrote about Jesus, his death, resurrection. Justin Martyr was a Christian historian. He wrote about Jesus, his death, his resurrection. Pliny the Younger was a Roman governor who, in, who actively persecuted Christians, but he wrote about the life of Jesus, the death of Jesus, the way he died, and whose hand he died by. Mara Bar Serapion was a Syrian philosopher. He wrote about the, the life, death, resurrection of Jesus. Suetonius was a Roman historian, biographer, and secretary to Emperor Hadrian. He wrote about Jesus. Cornelius Tactius was a Roman senator and historian from 14 to 68 AD. He wrote about Jesus. Thallus, a non-Christian historian. What I found most fascinating is the Jewish Rabbonic Talmud, which is the Jewish kind of is the Jewish book for Judaism. They they are trying, they're writing to trying to debunk Jesus as being the Messiah, yet they, they couldn't, they wrote soon after that, they couldn't deny that he lived, that he died, that he suddenly disappeared. They wrote of the same accounts, historical accounts, about Jesus' life, death, and resurrection. Um, Clement of Rome was a bishop and martyr. He wrote about Jesus. And I encourage you, search it out, investigate it yourself, and see that there's multiple historical accounts of the life, the death, the disappearance of Jesus. So these guys are on the road and they're saying, you know, are you the only one in Jerusalem who hasn't heard? And I love Jesus. I, I love Jesus. Like, he makes me laugh. Because look at how he answers. What things? What, what are you talking about? And they say, about Jesus of Nazareth, they replied, he was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. And this hit me, this hit me really hard. These are Jesus' disciples, again, who saw him walk on water, feed the 5,000, heal the sick, raise Lazarus from the dead, calm a storm with just his words. And before they got the revelation of his resurrection, to, the, to them still, Jesus was still a prophet, a great teacher, and a miracle worker. They go on, they say, the chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. And I love this, but we had hoped he was the one. That's why their faces were downcast. We had hoped. We had hoped he was the one who's going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it's the third day since all this took place. In addition, some of our women amazed us and they went down to the tomb early this morning but didn't find his body. See, they were not unaware of, of the women, what they had discovered. And they came and told us we had seen visions of angels who said he was alive. Then some of our companions, Peter and John, this is not just some of our, this is Peter and John, went to the tomb and found it was as the woman had said, but they did not see Jesus. And he said to them, look at Jesus' response. He says to them, how foolish you are. Not because you didn't believe him, but look at, he says, how foolish you are and how slow to believe all that the prophets have spoken. And he's talking to them as Jewish men of all the things that they had read in here. And so what does he do? He says, did not the Messiah have to suffer these things and enter his glory? And he began to explain, he beginning with Moses and all the prophets explained to them what was said in the scriptures concerning himself. And I think he would have quoted things like Isaiah. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our sins were upon him. And by his stripes we are healed. He would have mentioned David, who said that he's a man of sorrows, you know, counting with grief. He would have mentioned Ezekiel, saying that when the dry bones live, you will know he's the Lord.
As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus continued on as, a, as if he was going further. But they urged him strongly, stay with us, for it is nearly evening and the day is almost over. So he went in and, to stay among them. And when he, he was at the table with them, he took bread and gave thanks and broke it and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognized, I would love to see a replay of that. <laughs> And he disappeared from their sight. And they asked each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? See, listen, 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 listen. This is more than the law. This is not a religious book. This is not a rule book. This is a book about the king. And when they had read it as the law and as a religious book and as the right thing to do as Jews, to them it was dead and meaningless. But when Jesus opened it up and pointed all of the references to him in there, they said it burned inside of us. And it will, if you read this as a rule book, you're going to be bored. You're going to be confused. If you read this as a religious book, you might be mad. But if you read this and see the king, it's going to burn inside you too. And then they got up and returned at once to Jerusalem. Seven miles. They ran back at nighttime. This is not safe. They ran back because they had to share. And they found the 11 and those with them assembled together. And look what they said. Look what they said. They said, it is true. It's true. Then they said this. The Lord has risen, not the prophet, not the teacher, not the miracle worker. The Lord has risen. The king is risen. In other words, they just had a revelation that he's more than just a prophet. He's more than just a teacher. He's more than just a miracle worker. He is king. He is God. He did what he said he would do. He pulled it off. He is risen. And it changed Everything. It changed everything to the degree that the cowards who ran away upon Jesus' arrest went to their own graves, many of them horrific deaths, being tortured with this revelation and proclamation to the risen king. And here we are, 2,000 years later, still celebrating not a holiday but a historical event that changed everything. Paul would write this in Ephesians to the church in Ephesus. He said, I also pray that you will understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe him. This is the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead. And I quote that often. The same power that raised Jesus from the dead. But look at this. He says, and at the same time, the same power raised Jesus from the dead and sealed him in the place of honor at God's right hand in the heavenly realm. The moment that Jesus walked out of that grave, he went into Jerusalem a week before being hailed as king. But he walked out of that grave as the king of kings. Just to double down on that, Paul continues, he says, now he is far above any ruler or authority or power or leader or anything else. Not only in this world, he's king here. He's not king far off, he's king here. Not only in this world, but in the world to come. And God has put all things under the authority of Christ and has made him head over all things for the benefit of himself. No, it doesn't say, it says for the benefit of the church. And this is why we celebrate. This is why today is a big deal. This is why, this is, this is more than just a typical worship service. This is, this is why, because listen, the resurrected king is resurrecting me. And because the king walked out of the grave, that means that we too, at the trumpet sound, will walk out of the grave. That this, that this life is not the end, that there is something that is true, not because, not because we wish it to be, but because what he did. Because the event. Today's takeaway is simply before the resurrection, 
Jesus was perceived as just a good teacher. But the resurrection proves once and for all, he is God. So my challenge to you is you need to know. You need to investigate thoroughly. You don't need to believe all of the Bible. You don't need to agree with all of the Bible. You don't need, you don't need to like his church or believe what his church stands for or against. All you need to believe, all you need to know for certain is did he really walk out of that grave? Is the resurrection true? Because if it is, that changes everything. Paul said it. He says, if Christ's not raised, if it didn't happen, this is all worthless. It's futile. And you are still in your sins. Which that means, that's Bible speak for that this life is the end. That we're gonna have to pay yourself. But if he did walk out of that grave, if he did, then he is king. And if he did walk out of that grave, I'm forgiven. And I can walk out too. God, we thank you. Thank you. And Holy Spirit, I pray that you'd stir inside our hearts too. And I pray that we would be open to investigation, to inv investigating this event. And, and Jesus, that we would be open to relationship with you too. So you're more than a prophet, a teacher, a miracle worker. You're the king. And we worship you, our resurrected king. Amen. Mm -hmm.
of the life, the death, and the resurrection of Jesus than any other historical figure ever. There's more proof that Jesus lived, died, and rose again than there is that Julius Caesar ever existed, that Genghis Khan ever existed. Any of the historical figures, there's more evidence of Jesus than any of those. And in order to find salvation yourself, you don't need... You don't need to believe all the Bible, put it all together. All you need to do, according to Paul, is you need to confess with your mouth that Jesus is God and believe in your heart that he rose again from the dead, and then you will be saved. That's salvation for you too. I'm going to lead us in a prayer right now that just does just that. We're going to confess with our mouth that Jesus is God. And if you pray this prayer and you mean it, you believe it, right here, right now, you can be fine salvation too. And you can be part of the family of God and begin a relationship, personal relationship with Him. It's not joining a religion. It's not joining a church. It's personal, you and Him. So let's pray this together. If you're watching online, happy Easter, all of you. Would you pray this with me wherever you are as well? Everyone repeat this after me. Dear Jesus, I confess that you are God. And I believe that you rose again from the dead. And I ask you right now to become my God my Lord and Savior, and my friend. Thank you for forgiving me of all my wrongs and for accepting me just as I am. I give my heart to you in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to ask everyone to close their eyes and bow your heads. If you prayed this prayer for the first time, would you just boldly raise up your hand and give me a wave and say, yeah, Pastor, I prayed this prayer for the first time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Amen. I'll look around one more time. Make sure I didn't miss anyone. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Amen. Amen. If Come on. If you prayed this prayer the first time you're watching online, just click like on the I Have Decided button on the, in the comments below. And man, welcome to the family of God. Man, let's worship one more time.
what an amazing message, guys. We hope you enjoyed it. I uh, hope you enjoyed the whole Easter service today. And today I want to talk to you guys about giving. And I want to go through Acts 2, verses 42, which says, They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. So we are never meant to do this life alone. Humans are social, created by God for companionship. He even said that it's not good for Adam to be alone, so he created Eve. And this is exactly what the disciples were doing. They were devoted to hanging out and being together to build up their strength and sharing what they had with those around them to ensure that there was no need among them. It's important to connect, but it's also important to give. So when you give to help others out, we build this kind of sense of community. Solomon says in Proverbs 18 verse 16 where it says, A gift opens the way up and ushers the giver into the presence of the great. So giving opens doors and it creates relationships. So when you give to someone, they are more open to being open with you. And then you can kind of build a relationship from there. So today, I want to encourage you to go out today and give. Go out and build relationships with others. Devote yourself to the teachings that Jesus gave and to fellowship, which is just a Christian word for hanging out, uh, and to the breaking of bread or eating meals with others and to praying with others. Go out and bless people and build relationships, especially during Easter when you're probably going to be hanging out or already have hung out with family members. Um, be intentional about connecting. Be intentional about growing your relationship with them. So you can also give to Parallel Church, and it goes to places like My City Care, which goes to helping those who are unable to feed or clothe themselves, and it helps bring dignity to the less fortunate. So if you give your money, part of your money goes to you helping out those that amazing organization there. So you can do that by clicking the link in the comment section. It's a secure giving link. I would encourage you uh, to do that as well. So let's pray, guys. Dear God, I thank you so much uh, for what you did for us 2,000 years ago on the cross. I thank you for your sacrifice, uh, and I pray that everybody watching in today that's giving and not giving, I pray you just bless each and every one of them. Uh, I pray that you would just uh, and get them uh, to go out and, and to give and help others uh, and help them to see the needs uh, and help them to meet the needs in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. All right, guys, here at Parallel Church, we have five next steps, and that's attend, love, connect, give, and invite. And today I wanted to focus in on what we've already been talking about, and that's connecting. If you have not joined a house party, I would encourage you to go and do that. You don't even have to be in the vicinity of a, uh, of a campus. Uh, you can join an online connect group. We go live on Wednesday nights at 6 or 7 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. Uh, and if you have not joined in, I would encourage you to go out, join that group. Uh, or if you're in the vicinity of a campus, go out and join a campus group. Go and join a house party there. Go out and you're building relationships with others. You're building uh, your relationship with God just by being around and fellowshipping with others. So I'd encourage you to go out and connect. Uh, and so besides that, guys, happy Easter. Thank you so much for joining in with us today. We hope you have an amazing rest of your day.